Good evening everyone and welcome to another episode of On The Sofa. I'm Amy and I work in our marketing department and tonight I'm joined by Anna to discuss all things Clan Carmichael. So if this is the first time you've joined us, you might not know we've got a whole section on our website dedicated to each of the Scottish clans. So whether you're a Carmichael or a McGregor like me and you're interested in finding out more about the history of your clan, then we certainly recommend taking a look. So I'm Anna and I created Scotland Shop 20 years ago, so you would think that I would know everything there is to know about clans and tartans, but the, every day I learn something new and that is definitely why I love my job so much. So there are actually over 500 clan and family associations registered around the world and we love learning new bits of history and hearing from our customers about how they explored their heritage and traced their roots. We love digging into the often bloody and brutal stories, highlighting the lesser known bits of Scottish clan history and the work of the clan societies around the world. So don't hesitate to chip in if you have more to add. So this past month, for the month of June, we've been celebrating all things Carmichael. So join us today as we delve into this clan's history and discover some of their most intriguing stories from the past and present. We'll be learning about some of their most famous events throughout history, famous faces, old and new, and so much more. And we do always really welcome your input, so if you're associated with the Carmichaels and you've got stories to share or questions to ask, just let us know in the comments. So, let's begin by discussing the most important dates within the long history of Clan Carmichael. We'll start in 1068 with the beginning of the name Carmichael. The name Carmichael translates directly to Michael's Fort, which was found in their territory of Lanarkshire. This fort was created by Queen Margaret as she decided to make the Hill Fort, or Care, one of her first six churches made in Glasgow's surrounding area. The Hungarian-born English princess married Malcolm III of Scotland and was later canonised for her charitable actions. Clearly being extremely devoted, she began to further spread the Catholic Church within Scotland and commenced building churches in the area surrounding Glasgow. St Margaret dedicated the church on the care to St Michael and with this the people and area surrounding became of the name Carmichael. If you're in the area, there's now a Carmichael Visitor Centre, which was opened in 1994 and it's home to the former Edinburgh wax model collection depicting Scotland's millennium from Queen Margaret and Macbeth through to the present day. So it's definitely worth a trip, even if you just want to enjoy the delights of the Carmichael Bistro and Tea Room. Very tasty, Amy, I recommend it. <laughs> so, and you can also, if you really want to live like a Carmichael, you can even stay in one of the 200 year old stone cottages which nestle amongst the ancient sylvan landscape of the clan lands of the Carmichaels. Oh wow, that sounds very nice. Mm, it is beautiful. <laughs> okay, less of us planning our trips around <laughs> Scotland this summer and back to the history. So from this date, there's little known about the Carmichaels until 1321, when the first written record of the clan is recorded. It was recorded by Robert the Bruce as he granted Sir James Douglas the Valley of Douglas and the whole land and tenement of Kirkmichael. One thing to note here is the allegiance between the Douglas clan and the Carmichael clan. These clans, for the majority of their history, worked together as Carmichael almost being a sept of the Douglas clan. This continues to 1414, where the barony of Carmichael was confirmed after Sir John de Carmichael held charter over the lands of Carmichael from William. I'm not sure if that might be pronounced Carmichael, but anyway, either way, Carmichael or Carmichael from William, Earl of Douglas, between 1374 and 1384. Maybe one of our listeners can correct us. Yeah. <laughs> After this date, the Carmichael's clan officially began without the Douglases. Once the barony of Carmichael was confirmed, the second baron of Carmichael moved fast and built the first castle upon the estate in 1414. Sometime in the 1400s, the second castle on the Carmichael estate was built and named the East End House. I get living with the family can be a bit annoying, but building an entirely new castle does just feel a little bit dramatic. <laughs> Despite this, the house is still a great visit with its fantastic exterior and our favourite feature, the turret at the front door. I do love a turret. Yeah. I might have to build one of my house. <laughs> so, continuing on to 1426, 
the year in which the Carmichaels gained a new crest after the heroic actions of Sir John de Carmichael of Meadowland. He was a part of the Scottish mercenary service sent to aid the French forces in the Hundred Year War. This crest depicts the spear in which Sir John de Carmichael toppled the Duke of Clarence from his horse during the Battle of Beaugé, which led to a French victory. After this battle, he was anointed as the Bishop of Orleans and was named John de Saint-Michel. Again, that's Saint-Michel or St. Michael, I'm not sure. We <laughs> definitely need to seek some expert advice yeah, definitely. on this. See, we do learn something every day. <laughs> the heroics of Sir John de Carmichael also led to the clan's war cry, which is toujours pressed, meaning always ready, so that all of the Carmichael clan would show such bravery that Sir John did. I think this also shows us something extremely important, not just within the Carmichael history, but within Scottish history as a whole, which is the importance of the Auld Alliance. First agreed in 1295, the Auld Alliance was built on Scotland and France's shared need to curtail the English, not for the first or the last time. Another really interesting historical crossover is the fact that John de Carmichael served this role at the cathedral throughout the besieging of the city of Orléans, which was one of the major victories for the French in the Hundred Year War. This was the beginning of the rise of Joan of Arc. If you don't already know the famous story, Joan of Arc was a peasant girl who convinced Charles of Valois to allow her to lead a French army to the besieging of the city of Orleans. She did this by telling Charles that she believed that God had picked her to lead France to victory. This is clearly an extremely famous place for Clan Carmichael, as their greatest hero gained, fought and served this position throughout two of the most important battles within the Hundred Year War. The story of Joan of Arc is personally one of the most interesting stories throughout the entirety of the war, as it depicts the importance of religion before the Enlightenment period. It really does seem a bit crazy how a peasant girl led an army with no experience and actually won the battle. Wouldn't you love to have been there to watch that? <laughs> Definitely. Although I don't know if I really want to be in a battle. Thank you. <laughs> so, fascinating stuff. But overall, the city of Orleans is definitely one to add to the bucket list for any Carmichaels. Well, I think never mind the Carmichaels, I might be Just going to. anyone, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so on the 29th of May, 1546, one of the most famous Carmichaels, Peter Carmichael, the fourth of Balmedy and son of James Carmichael, played a major part in the Scottish Reformation. He played a part in the murder of James Beaton in October 1546 and was one of the starting points of the Scottish Ref Reformation, which was led by John Knox and George Wishart. This began with a party of 16 men approaching St Andrew's Castle. They waited for the first shift of masons and builders to begin work on the castle fortifications. And when this happened, William Kirkcaldy, the Laird of the Grange, approached a sentry and asked if the cardinal was yet awake. The man became suspicious and was stabbed and tossed into the moat. It's a bit gruesome. <laughs> he could have thought of a less suspicious question though, I feel, but anyone would have been a bit suspicious of that. But anyway, the alarm within the town was set and Beaton barricaded himself within his quarters. The conspirators then threatened to burn the door down and Beaton subsequently allowed them in. Beaton allegedly cried, I'm a priest, fi fi, before John Leslie and Peter Carmichael stabbed him to death. So they didn't take sympathy, <laughs> did they? So a very dark story. The conspirators were then arrested and the leader, George Wishart, was willingly burnt alive. Dear, this gets worse. <laughs> Despite Wishart dying, Peter Carmichael and other conspirators cunningly escaped dressed as doctors. Carmichael later died in 1556 at his home in Balmedy in Scotland. And the next major event within Clan Carmichael's history can only be described as a more dramatic sibling rivalry. Instead of today, when siblings just argue over who has the TV remote, I've definitely done that with my sister, <laughs> the Carmichaels were fighting for the future of England and Scotland at the Battle of Marston Moor. The Battle of Marston Moor is believed to have been one of the largest battles ever seen on English soil. This battle saw the Carmichael split between sides of the English Civil War, with Lord Carmichael and his two sons standing with King Charles I and his other two sons siding with the Royalists. Lord Carmichael's firstborn son, James Carmichael, the commander of the Clydesdale Regiment, tragically met and defeated his Royalist brother in battle. 
which forever changed the history of England and Scotland as it saw the beginning of the rise of Oliver Cromwell. So the effects of the sibling rivalry led to 1650 to Cromwell's invasion of Scotland. On his conquest through Scotland, Cromwell and the separatist brothers destroyed the main Carmichael's castle as revenge for siding against them. The other house on the estate was not destroyed, leading historians to believe the family that lived there sided with Cromwell. The ruin of the original house still stands and is truly an amazing visit. So another one for our trip around Scotland. <laughs> so from here onwards, the main lineage of the Carmichael clan began to decline as Andrew Carmichael, the sixth Earl of Hindford, died in 1817 childless passing the chieftainship through the female side of the family, through the Carmichael Anstruther bloodline until Sir Wyndham of Carmichael Anstruther's death in 1980. This all led to the current chief, Richard Carmichael, to drop the Anstruther from his name to become the official chief of the Carmichael clan, as one is unable to be chief of two clans simultaneously. So now he is Richard Carmichael of Carmichael, the 30th chief of the name in arms, and the 26th Baron of the Lands of Carmichael in Lanarkshire, Scotland. That's quite a big badge. <laughs> it's not words to get on your badge. <laughs> but now that that is done, we can talk about the fun stuff. Tartan. And we're very well dressed today, aren't we? We are, yeah. We're both Amy. wearing the Carmichael ancient tartan. So, we've even brought along some Carmichael here. So, should we talk about cloth first of all, since it's our favourite subject? Yes, definitely. Yeah. So we've got here a 10 ounce cloth, which is the one that we use for most of our um, clothing, interiors, products. It's really lovely, soft um, fabric, but it's also just a really nice weight. to get a lovely hang and it's um, also really easy to work with. So, so there we go, 10 ounce Carmichael cloth. We also brought along a bit of the 8 ounce cloth just to show you that just lighter weight again this really is very lightweight so used more for um, table linen and accessories like braces and because the good thing is the pattern repeat the set size as you can see if you compare the two is a lot smaller on an 8 ounce cloth um, so you get to see more of the pattern if you've just got a small accessory. But a very beautiful tartan, lovely soft green, sky blue, and then a little um, kind of orangey red and, and a yellow stripe through it. Very nice. So there's little known about the history of the Carmichael tartan, apart from the tartan first being recorded in 1905 by Carmichael of Archerfield in the Highland Collection. Since then, the tartan was confirmed by the current chief of Carmichael, Richard Carmichael of Carmichael, Subsequently, the registered tartan is being kept by Lord Lyon in the new register house, Edinburgh. And then you can go and visit that, can't you? You can, yeah. Another thing to do. In the modern day, the clan have also had some extremely impressive people, such as Franklin Carmichael, who was an original member of the Group of Seven, otherwise known as the Algonquin School. They were a group of Canadian landscape painters from 1920 to 1933. And these artists used watercolour rather than the usual oil paints and with this they painted some of their most famous works using this method. The new form of landscape art led to the group of seven who unilaterally strove to give visual form to spiritual value. You can tell I didn't write that sentence. The group all went on to enjoy great success until on the 24th of October 1945 Carmichael died in his hometown. In, in Canada. So another great trip, if you want to go to Canada instead of um, Scotland, Amy, you can go and see the exhibition um, which is being held in um, Carmichael's hometown. Oh, wow, very so, cool. Yeah, and there's we've written a whole blog about that, so um, there's a link to the exhibition on our website as well, so if you want to find out more about that. Another famous Carmichael is Ian Carmichael, who was an English actor who worked on stage, screen and radio in a career spanning over 70 years. He was born on the 18th of June 1920 to Arthur and Kate Carmichael. Ian was always interested in acting during his childhood and he even received a scholarship to the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art. After his first major role in Julius Caesar, he gave up acting and went to join the war effort. He served in Europe for many years with the Royal Armoured Corps as a commissioned officer in the 22nd Dragoons. 
When he returned from war, he began to act again, but fame was hard won and it took until the 50s and 60s for his career to take off. Ian then landed the role in the comedy movies of Private's Progress, which came out in 1956, and I'm Alright Jack in 1959. I think I might be too young to know what these are, but I'm, I believe that they are classics. <laughs> Your granddad will tell you all about them. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> These roles brought him to stardom and from here he had an illustrious career in entertainment. To cap his career off, he was honoured with an OBE in the 2003 Queen's Birthday Honours List. So quite the life he's had, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So to finish off the famous faces, we'll talk about Hoagie Carmichael, who was an American composer, singer, self-taught pianist and an actor who wrote several of the most highly regarded popular standards in American music. Carmichael composed the music for Stardust, Georgia On My Mind, again you're probably a bit young, but they are classics, <laughs> The Nearness of You and Heart and Soul, four of the most recorded American songs of all time. Hoagie was also critically acclaimed with him, earning an Academy Award nomination in 1947 for The Old Buttermilk Sky and winning an Oscar five years later for In the Cool Cool of the Evening. Hoagie Carmichael died on the 27th of December 1981 and was later inducted into the Songwriters Hall of Fame. Wow, that was quite a lot of interesting people, wasn't it? So Anna, do you think you're now a Carmichael expert? Well, I'll be doing the quiz, which is out soon, so I'll be testing my knowledge there. <laughs> Well, thank you very much for listening and watching. And if you want to learn more about the clan or discover how to get involved, you can visit the official Clan Society website. The Clan Carmichael website is currently split between Clan Carmichael International, Carmichael Scotland and Clan Carmichael USA. The clan is committed to upholding the history of the clan and is hosting its first clan gathering since 2017 next year. This will mark the 40th anniversary since Chief Richard reactivated the clan in a gathering here at Carmichael in June 1983. Wow, I look forward to that. Maybe, yeah. maybe we can get ourselves an invite to the gathering. Hopefully. Next June, June 2023, <laughs> we'll look forward to that. We hope you've enjoyed learning about Clan Carmichael and remember to subscribe for more clan and tartan content.